At the news tonight, today marks one year since 34-year-old pilot Byron Ferguson's single-engine Aztec plane from, fell from the sky over waters in western New Providence. His death rocked the nation as armed forces admitted to dropping the ball in a number of instances in their search and recovery efforts. Our Theo Seeley was one of the first on the scene that night of the crash, and one year later he takes a look at how the Ferguson's family is coping and what lessons authorities have learned since that time. November 8, 2018, 9.27 p.m. Unconfirmed reports reach eyewitness news that a plane crashed in waters off Love Beach, carrying a sole passenger, pilot Byron Ferguson, who was en route to Lyndon Pindling International Airport from Florida. Three hours into their efforts, Superintendent Liam Mandelavo confirmed that the search was called off. Investigations are continuing. As you notice, it's, it's very dark at night. Um, so tomorrow morning, first light, we will be conducting a full investigation and to find out whether anyone is still alive or if persons may have perished in this aircraft. Commander Charlotte Pinder revealed to our news team that the search was called off because it was too dark and officers only responded with four hours of oxygen in their tanks. Recognizing that we cannot predict when the call will go out for our vessels to respond, the vessels that responded were not necessarily on full tanks. At some point after they would have exhausted uh, four hours after into the search, and had to continue to make preparations for divers to do a more intensive search. They had to return in. One week after searching waters off western New Providence, the RBDF says they could find no sign of Ferguson nor his plane, but a group of headstrong civilian volunteers wouldn't buy it. On November 15th, the volunteers led by Gina Knowles recovered significant portions of Ferguson's downed plane and what appeared to be his flight plan. It was 40 minutes that the first person went, I see it, I see it. If divers actually went in the water, I would like to know who it was because I want to know if they, if they did go, indeed go in the water, if they just went in the water and sat down and did this. Because, I mean, we have enough people on our forces to do the same thing we did. 24 hours later, senior officers of the RBDF and police force defended their handling of the search, confirming that they had Ferguson's best interest at heart. The first set of people that died for this country were Defense Force members. And when incidents occur, we seek to do our best to provide the assistance necessary to help all concerned parties. And the Defense Force played a very, very critical role in the recovery efforts. Four days later, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis ordered a full probe into the crash and recovery efforts. There was never an official calling off of search efforts for Ferguson, but surveillance of the area of the crash has proven that activity was basically non-existent months after Ferguson disappeared. In the wake of the accident, air accident investigators say they have learned a number of lessons and assert that new protocol has been established, which improves the process of responding and handling to air accident emergencies. Our news team attempted to speak with Delvin Major of the Air Accident Investigation Team for a more comprehensive look one year later, but he's been unavailable for comment for the past three weeks. Commodore Bethel, who headed the Defense Force during the entire saga, is currently on vacation. Ferguson's wife, Anya Ferguson, on Facebook today said, quote, It's been a long year without you, Byron. I cannot imagine what you had to endure the night your plane crashed. I try to put it all behind me and to keep back the tears that normally follow, but I can't. End quote. Theo Seeley, Eyewitness News.